Hey guys, today I'm going to do a quick overview review of the iPhone 4 and the HTC One S, both running respect for uh, T-Mobile respectively. Uh, the unlocked, it's an unlocked iPhone 4, factory unlocked, running firmware 5.0.1, I haven't updated yet. Um, and I'm actually, I actually got Siri on this guy. Hey Siri! You may be wondering if this is a person or a computer responding. No, no I'm not. Okay, so here we have the HTC One S for T-Mobile. <clears throat> this is running Sense 4.0 uh, overlaid on top of Android ICS 4.0. I believe 4. Uh, let me double check on that here. Oops. Okay. It's running on top of uh, Android 4.0.3. I think you can see that there. It's too light. But it's uh, running on the latest version of Android. Almost the latest version. 4.0.4 would be the latest. Uh, in terms of hardware specs, you have a 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon Crate S4 processor. This is uh, the top of the line dual core processor out right now, guys. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. Uh, I've seen uh, benchmarks actually beat the benchmarks of the Tegra 3 quad core. So uh, this is a very, very, very fast processor. Uh, has great GPU acceleration. You have the app drawer. Um, doesn't have the widgets tab like you would find in stock ICS, but it is customizable. You can just hold on to one of the tabs down here and it'll actually take you to a screen where you can uh, either remove those said tabs or you can add the uh, frequent tab. I've removed it, but you can have, when you buy the phone, stock out of the box, it comes with all three tabs below. So that's the app drawer. Uh, you have the home screen. You can uh, customize uh, to however many home screens as you'd like. It's right there. It says add panel. Uh, let's see. You got your standard widgets. Uh, you got the little toggles here. Have a nice little transition effect on the toggles. Uh, HTC's clock widget, clock weather widget. Uh, here's a cool little thing. Now, if you go to the uh, cl uh, clock widget here on HSense 4.0 you'll actually see that there's a little earth that spins around and gives you the location of whatever world clock it is that you may have uh, set up set up here. So I think that's pretty cool. It's got a nice effect. Again, great GPU acceleration. You could zoom in. You could zoom out. Uh, nice little feature. Uh, you know, adds to the, uh, I think, the graphics acceleration that you see here with Sense 4.0. I think what, what they've done is they've taken the great 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 GPU acceleration of ICS and applied it to what I believe is a very 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 nice overlay I know a lot of people give sense a hard time but this this is really uh, stepping it up a notch uh, with the folders and you know just just the, the, the you know and we use this word but the prettiness of it uh, you can see that it has those nice little effects the inertia effects uh, in, in certain settings now on the other hand you have the iPhone 4 um, you know how the iPhone 4 works. It's a grid of icons. Uh, basically, goes left to right. Now, if you're talking about the 4S, actually, excuse me, it just goes right, uh, and go left, and you get spotlight. But um, in case you're wondering about specs, the 4S has a 800 megahertz dual core A5 chip uh, with about, I think, I think it's a gig of RAM. I could be wrong on that. Uh, it's the display resolution of 640 by 960. Uh, PPI pixels per inch of 326 so uh, what that all translates to means if you look at the phone you won't see pixels uh, that's basically what it is now I know I've, I've read very 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 picky people who will tell you that you look at the iPhone close enough and you'll see pixels well I don't think anyone's holding the phone up to their to their eyes like this if you are you should probably stop because it's likely not good for your eyes uh, so you know people know what iOS is all about you got the folders you know, very organized folders, the drop down menu, uh, you got the little quote unquote widgets uh, up here in the notification menu. Now, the difference between notification menus here is look, with iOS, the notification co goes over the top notification. You see that? It's actually kind of like a, a curtain, independent curtain. Whereas with uh, Android, the notification goes below the notification up top, which is the, the clock and uh, the time, date, network data etc etc battery so I think that's actually more convenient because you can see it at all times uh, whereas with iOS it goes right over it until you go down and then it comes back again little perks 
nothing anyone's really going to notice on day to day use, but it's it's there. Now, uh, in terms of uh, browsers, you you got WebKit and you got Chrome on um, ICS, or at least on my specific phone. I downloaded Chrome separately, and let me show you the speed of of the pinch zoom. It's got a nice screen. Uh, it's a uh, QHD screen. It has uh, a 256 pixels per inch on a <clears throat> 540 by 960 display. So it's a very nice display, 4.3 inches. Uh, it, you know, it's super AMOLED, so the colors are very vibrant. However, the whites do come out a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit yellowish and bluish at times. Uh, you could see as opposed to to the whites here on the iPhone. I guess some can argue that the whites on the iPhone look a little bluish as well, and this looks a little more realistic, but uh, I guess the opinion is in the eye of the beholder. So here you go, you got iOS, or you got Android, uh, Google Chrome, pinch zoom is smooth as butter again, I do the five finger multi-touch, if I can uh, pan around the screen while I'm zooming, uh, that means we're good to go, smooth, very very smooth. Uh, Chrome has these tabs, if you add a new tab, uh, you can open the tab separately and it, it comes into kind of like a, a web OS tab swiping feature, the multitasking feature where you can actually swipe them away. So I, want, I don't want that. So I swipe it away. I don't want that. I swipe it away. I love that Android ICS has uh, implemented swipe, uh, not just in their keyboard, but even in the notification, you can swipe away notifications, which I think is great. Again, it adds to the, uh, the, in the entire Android experience and the new Android experience that you get with uh, ICS's fluidity. Now iOS again, you have a very very smooth Safari browser. Uh, it doesn't have Flash. I don't think at this point much people care. If people do care, well, again, that's uh, all in a matter of opinion. I care. I like watching Flash uh, on my phone. So uh, YouTube directly from YouTube's website. As you can see, pinch zoom is smooth as butter. Sometimes I get the pinch zoom. Um, I get it to it. It just kind of stutters. It doesn't work right away uh, with iOS. I don't know why that is, but. In any case, it's still fast, it's still smooth. You can see not a pixel in sight. It's got that nice inertia effect. Uh, I can pinch and I can rotate around the screen. So everything works with iOS. Now here's one thing with iOS and with Android. I think that that is oops, excuse me. That I think is one of those things where again it's overlooked. But realistically speaking, it's something that I think makes it should matter at least um, when it comes to bigger screens and, and fairly fairly smaller screens with the iPhone 4. So when you're scrolling through a web page, you can only flick to about to about that velo I mean, the strength that you're flicking will only get you this far. You can flick as hard as you want; it won't get you any farther. Now, I I find that to be a little cumbersome because if I'm on a website that requires a ton of scrolling, or or I'm you know I'm reading comments sometimes on a tech website, and I'm trying to scroll through the entire thing. I'm left with basically having to go and go and go and go and go until I reach where it was that I, I, I wanted to reach. Now, with Android, it's the complete opposite. It actually, uh, it actually scrolls with the you know, velocity of your swipe. So if I want to swipe slightly, it'll, it'll scroll slightly. If I want to swipe heavily, it'll scroll heavily. So you, know, you can see right there what I mean. It's, it's immediate. It takes me all the way down. So... Uh, again, I, I like that because it gives you the ability to get somewhere quicker and, you know, you, you don't have to deal with the uh, constant swiping with iOS. And it's a smaller screen, so literally my finger will go through, well, I have fairly fat fingers, my finger will go through one swipe. And this is a little bit bigger, so I can actually move my finger around the screen. So again, subtle differences, but uh, they are differences. And in terms of... Uh, in terms of the screens overall, both have a very, very beautiful, gorgeous screens. I don't know uh, whether or not you can see that, but the viewing angle on the One S is amazing. And the uh, IPS display on the iPhone, in my opinion, to this day is top notch in terms of viewing angles. I mean, it looks like it's coming out of the screen. Almost looks like it's coming out of the screen. So the, the viewing angle, I mean, no one's going to look at their phone like this. But in terms of just being fair, the viewing angles here are gorgeous. Uh, the viewing angles on the One S are also just as good. Now I have a skull candy case on this, a white skull candy case, which I think is is an awesome case. Uh, if you guys are looking at a sturdy case uh, that will get the job done, get the uh, skull candy. They have it in different colors, chrome, titanium, but I like I kind of like the white. I know it looks red from here because of the, uh, the room lights being down, but 
It's a very, very good case. I also have uh, protecting all around the phone, and I have a screen protector on the front. You probably never notice. It's a really good screen protector. Got it from a uh, kiosk in my local mall called Gadget Guard. Gadget Guard. Okay, battery life on the One S is great. Great. You can see right here. Um, 11 hours, 46 minutes, 36% left on my battery. So, you know, my estimation that would be. Oh, there you go, 35%. That would be 65% at 11 hours, 46 minutes of fairly heavy use. I've been using the phone like crazy all day. It's my primary driver, uh, and I, you know, I'm on my phone a lot. Um, you know, iOS has a good battery life. Uh, excuse me, the iPhone 4 has a good battery life. The 4S, from what, I, from what I've seen, has pretty bad battery life. Well, it's not bad, but it's not the greatest. It's definitely not better than the original 4, and it's generally a little clunky, uh, or a little... Uh, confusing at times because it charges quickly but the battery dies just as quick whereas with the 1s it charges you know doesn't charge as quickly as the iphone but i mean this thing lasts this is a, this is a great battery i don't have to charge it until late at night uh so and that again that's what heavy use so definitely give them credit for that uh, you know you got the stock ics email client i like the fact that they left some stock uh in the entire ui experience i mean the messages kind of look stock again you got that nice inertia effect um you know, I mean, the notification bar is definitely basically stock, except it's not transparent. Um, you know, you don't have the the blue the blue uh, shadow or the blue glow that you would get on ICS when you over scroll. But overall, again, it's 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 got everything in terms of what you would expect from a 2012 modern operating system running on a top of the line top of the line processor. So again, great specs, great phone, great OS. Great overall experience, great feel. Uh, you know, I really don't have anything bad to say about this phone. Any minor software issues are fixable. Those are very, very easily solvable through uh, carrier patches, and they'll send those out. You'll get the updates. But in terms of hardware, the hardware is gorgeous. It's thin. Uh, it's got, you know, great. It's got good accessories thus far, from what I've seen. Um, in terms of in terms of rooting, roaming, and uh, the development, it's it's good and it's it's getting better because the phone did just come out. But it's very, very, very um, customizable in itself. No less, you know, if you install a ROM or custom ROM, uh, you know, that would be a completely different story. But in itself, it's pretty customizable. Uh, you know, you could really do anything you'd want to it. And I got, you know, my f nice little neat folders. You know, iOS, kind of same deal. Your phone is going to look like everybody else's phone. Uh, you can scroll to the right, uh, see your icons. Yeah, there's integration with iOS, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, if I want to, for example, if I want to go to my photos and I want to, uh, I don't know, let's say I want to share my photo. Okay, let's do the same thing here with Android. Let's say I want to share my photo. All right, so in Android, you have the option to share, delete, edit more, at least on Sense 4.0. So I can click on share and I can go to see all and it gives me all of these options to share this picture with I mean that thing is that thing is long man and it literally literally adds to the integration with specific apps that you download so this thing could go on and on and on the more developers create these apps that integrate with the, the actual OS experience um, then sky's the limit but you know you could see Pixay Pro, Picasa, Twitter, Messages, Google Plus, Gmail, Flickr, Facebook, Bluetooth Notes, SkyDrive, Dropbox, Mail, Twitter, you know, Facebook. I mean, this thing just goes on and on. Okay, now with iOS, you got the sharing option. You can email the photo, message it, assign it to contact, use as wallpaper, or tweet it. Or print. Um, very substandard. I guess for a lot of people, that gets the job done. Uh, so you can't really complain about that. But man, Android just keeps going and going and going. And this thing, like the Energizer battery, man, doesn't want to stop. So, you know, love that integration. Uh, it's really given the experience. It's given Android experience, experienced Android users as well as new Android users, um, something to be excited about. Uh, iOS, you know, hopefully with iOS 5, they give users uh, something to be excited about because this is no longer exciting for me. I mean, it was for a long time, but iOS now just feels kind of boring and bland. Uh, I could still use this phone on a regular basis if, if it wasn't for T-Mobile Edge, except by the end of the year, as you know, they are going to adopt the uh, 
extra banding to make the iPhone compatible with 3G for T-Mobile. So that's coming at the end of the year. They said around fall time. But this thing is just, I mean, 42 megabytes per second, HSPA+. Plus. It's fast. You know, it's got everything. It's got the games. Uh, the games run amazing on it. I mean, you can see Temple Run here real quick. Temple Run looks great. And I'm not taking any, anything away from the iPhone. The iPhone runs games like no other. It really does. I mean, you got NBA 2K12. You got all the fighting games, um, you know, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, etc., etc., Soul Calibur. But the only difference is, just look how small the screen is. It gets hard playing on a screen this small. Whereas, you see this, you know, on this gorgeous 4.3-inch Super AMOLED screen. And man, oh, I lost. But as you can see, it runs great. So there you guys go. Not much of a review, just an overview of both phones next to each other. Got the iPhone 4, got the uh, AC1S. Um, obviously, in the end, the decision is yours to make. I recommend the 1S if you were to choose between the two, be it the 4S or the 4 against AC's 1S. I would take the 1S right now if you were to give me the option. And um, I'm loving it so far. So there you guys go. Thank you for watching.